Baby Bumps is sponsored by the Breastfeeding for a Healthy Brownsville Community Coalition. Hello Brownsville, my name is Luis Salazar and I'm the program manager for the Maternal and Child Health Division here at the city of Brownsville. August is the breastfeeding month and to celebrate this month we have with us Miss Gracie Martinez. Miss Gracie, thank you for coming. Thank you for inviting me. Okay Miss Gracie, uh, thank you for uh, coming. Let's uh, begin. Um, why would you recommend breastfeeding? Well, uh, breastfeeding to begin with, it's the human milk designed specifically for human babies. Uh, it contains everything, uh, all the nutrition that the baby needs and it provides the baby with a lot of health protection. It, it helps the baby's immune system completely to develop. Uh, um, you might know that babies are born without an immune system. It's gonna take a few weeks to start developing it. So breast milk contains the right amount of uh, antibodies that really are gonna help the baby to be healthier in a lot of uh, different areas. Nice. Uh, why would you recommend mothers to exclusively breastfeed? Because instead of using formula? Because mothers have benefits too, not only the babies, mothers can have a lot of protection against uh, cancer, against uh, certain types of cancer like um, breast cancer, ovarian cancer. Uh, mother can have a long uh, life, long benefits like uh, diabetes type 2 prevention. Um, mm. Compared to formula, one thing that I, I think that uh, kind of involves everything is formula is an artificial product. It provides nutrition and it was actually designed to uh, supplement babies that could not be breastfed. So breast milk, it's uh, the best milk because it's like I said before, human milk for human babies and it's a natural product and it provides the baby everything baby needs plus uh, health benefits and um, it creates a bonding with, uh, with the mother and it has a lot of uh, benefits, not only emotional, uh, developmental benefits, uh, baby has better growth and development. Wow, impressive. Yes. Um, one of the most common questions we receive at the Maternal and Child Health Division from recent mothers is, uh, that is if it's true that mothers can uh, Mothers who breastfeed can lose weight faster. Is this true? Yes. Yes. Nice. Um, the fact that the mother's body is producing breast milk burns extra calories. Now, we have to understand our culture. Yes. I work in a hospital setting and I see uh, grandmas coming with uh, pictures full of atoles and things like that, that yes, they are gonna help the mom produce more milk, but if the mother takes that in addition to her regular nourishment, of course she's getting a lot of extra calories. And a breastfeeding mom uh, needs only about 300 to 400 extra calories a day which can be met with a, a, an extra snack a day, you know, like yes. a toast and a glass of milk or a glass of juice or things like that. But uh, eating for two, it's not gonna help her lose weight. <laughs> okay, uh, she has to eat for herself and try to make a, to have a balanced diet, three meals a day, a little snack in between, and definitely uh, stay hydrated. She needs to drink lots of fluids and atoles and maicena <laughs> and all those uh, things that they really help the mom produce more milk, but they should be part of the diet, not addition to the diet. Nice. Um, another thing that uh, we have heard is that breastfeeding releases a lot of hormones that help mothers heal faster. Is this true? Yes, it is. Um, the prolactin and oxytocin that are the, the hormones that uh, make breast milk and uh, have a lot to do with the amount of milk that the mom produces, uh, they also help uh, the uterus to have extra contractions and that helps the uterus completely heal faster and it is uh, research shows that it is true. Great. Um, you mentioned that breastfeeding help mothers with their, their bonding, bonding. Yes. Um, it's true that this breastfeeding also help reduce postpartum depression, now that mental health is so important in, in, in our society. 
There is a lot of controversy about that because some researchers related to actually breastfeeding like a more incidence of depression. Uh, there have been a lot of studies on that and uh, what I've seen in uh, like a compilation of information is that a lot of the moms might have uh, postpartum depression even before they deliver during pregnancy. So there is a lot of risks and a lot of circumstances that can guide the mother to, to breastfeed. But overall, most of the research shows that moms that breastfeed, breastfeed have less incidence of postpartum depression. Great. Um, other benefits that we have heard, uh, you mentioned them um, a little before, um, like it helped reduce the risk for certain cancers, uh, osteoporosis, arthritis. Um, yes. Is this true as well? Yes. Uh, for instance, osteoporosis and arthritis, uh, the mother, the way the mom's body uh, or the mom's bones recalcify after breastfeeding helps that mother to provoke, uh, prevent osteoporosis and um, arthritis too. Uh, the, the most important thing to understand is that all benefits are there but they are going to be more efficient if the mother breastfeed for at least six months exclusively. The research shows that most of the benefits and, uh, for the mother and for the baby happen after four to six months of exclusive breastfeeding. If the mother is supplementing with formula, because a lot of mothers decide to do that, which is okay, is their choices. Um, they need to breastfeed for a longer period of time in order for them to achieve all these benefits that are super recommended for mother and baby. Now that you mentioned this uh, combination between breastfeeding and formula, if I exclusively breastfeed my child, my baby, how can I know that he's receiving all the nutrients he needs? Okay, uh, babies are born with a certain weight, each baby is individual. Mm -hmm. Most babies will lose up to 10%, 7 to 10% of their birth weight within the first week. Beginning the second week, they have to recover that, that uh, weight that they lost in the first week. And beginning day number 16 or the third week, they have to continuously gain weight in a daily basis. It's a very minimal amount, and that is why it's so important that the mothers take the babies to the, uh, the doctor's checkups. Uh, so the doctor can monitor the baby's weight gain because that is a big factor in, in telling us that the baby is having enough. Plus at home, the mother, meanwhile, she goes to the doctors to the pediatrician's visit. Uh, she can count the diapers that the baby is wetting and soiling every day. And that's a very good predictor for the mother to know that the baby is having enough. Uh, another uh, thing that the mother can be assured that the baby is getting the best nutrition, it's looking and observing at the, the stool of the baby. The, it's going to be changing in the first two, three days. It's going to be very black, tarry, gooey. It looks like tar, actually. Uh, it's going to be very dry. Uh, between the third and the fifth day, it's going to be greenish, yellowish. Um, we call that meconium. It still has some meconium in the third to fifth day. And it's going to be more watery after the third day. And beginning the sixth day of life, the baby has to have yellow, bright yellow stools. And they're going to be loose. They're going to look seedy. It's going to look look like diarrhea sometimes, they can be very noisy, but all this is normal in a breastfed baby. And the color in the stool tells you how digestion is being so gentle for this baby. Nice. Wow. Um, you mentioned that a good way to determine if my baby is getting enough nutrients is uh, by counting the diapers. On average, how many diapers a um, healthy baby produces uh, per day. And in the first two days, baby is probably going to be having a, only one wet diaper a day. Beginning the third day, baby needs to have two, between two to five diapers, wet diapers a day, and at least one dirty diaper a day. But after day number six, the baby is going to have at least six wet diapers daily. And that is going to be a, a sign that the baby is really getting enough. You know, we cannot measure what baby is taking in when mm -hmm. the baby is being breastfed unless we pump and give it in a bottle. But uh, when the baby breastfeed or nurses directly, now the, the new um, definition is chest feed, 
when the baby is chest feeding, uh, we cannot measure, but everything that goes in has to go out. So by measuring the wet diapers, we will know that this baby is having enough. And the number, the standard number after day number six is gonna be six a day. Six per day, Wet Excellent. diapers. I'm curious, um, can you explain uh, to me how the process of uh, producing milk works in, sure. in, in mothers? Yes, uh, hormones play an important role in it. Uh, it. It begins with the pregnancy. When the mother gets pregnant, her hormones start changing, and actually her breast, if this is the first, first pregnancy, her breast is gonna start a, a complete development uh, during the first pregnancy. That's why the mother gets so, sen so much sensitivity and uh, some growth in the breast, and you can see the veins, the blue veins kind of being more noticed. Uh, there is a change of color in the areola and nipple uh, caused by the hormones, but that milk, it's, it really starts being produced from fourth month on. Um, by the time that the mother delivers, once the baby gets out and the pregnancy hormones stop, then the lactation hormones start. So there is a very high surge of prolactin in the mother, which is the, the mothering hormone and it's the one that, that produces the breast milk. And then the oxytocin, which is the second hormone, which releases or makes the glands to contract to release the milk and cause the letdown effect. So uh, prolactin and oxytocin are the, the main hormones producing breast milk, but it is important to understand that the body can make the milk by itself anyways, whether the mother decides to breastfeed or not. But if the mommy wants to breastfeed, she needs to understand that frequent breast emptying is gonna be the clue to an abundant milk supply because the breast is gonna give you what you ask for. The yes. more you ask, the more milk you will have. Yes, um, actually I have heard that also with muscles. If you don't use your muscles, they will not grow. They use um, it or lose it fast. Exactly, exactly. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, another common question that we receive over here in the, in the maternal and childhood division is that if it's safe for babies to consume the initial yellowish milk that um, mothers produce at the beginning of the pregnant, at uh, the beginning of the, after a baby's born. Definitely, uh, it is called colostrum. It's a thick, rich, yellow, orange fluid. It's clear, it's sticky, and it's very little. It's called colostrum. Some cultures believe that it's not healthy or it's not safe. But research has shown that it's the best milk you can provide to your newborn baby. Oh. Colostrum is rich in fat and carbohydrates, everything that the baby needs. And actually, it has some other substances, like for instance, it has one substance that helps to clear the baby's intestines. And, and that prevents a lot of uh, digestive infections, um, like diarrhea, rotavirus, a lot of issues that can be a threat to the baby's health in the early weeks. Nice, nice. Um, I have heard that colostrum is called um, liquid gold or something like that. It's because of this high um, amount of nutrients. Correct? Definitely. Uh, it has a lot to do with the color and also with the dense uh, nutrients that it has, plus all the benefits that it has too. Um, like I mentioned before too, a baby is born without an immune system mm -hmm. and colostrum is loaded with uh, antibodies. So it helps. Uh, specifically, uh, it, all the babies benefit from colostrum, but premature babies or late preterm babies born 37 weeks or before, they highly benefit from colostrum because there is a, a this, um, disease that uh, affects uh, newborns uh, sometimes, not in all the cases, but babies that have to be in the intensive care unit uh, for uh, a few weeks uh, because they're born very prematurely have a high risk of acquiring necrotizing and enterocolitis which uh, causes the intestine to stop working i mean to die so uh, this is a very high risk uh, um, problem with with uh, premature babies and and this colostrum and breast milk really protects the babies against that wow 
I see, but Ms. Gracie, we're about to conclude this interview. Now, um, the million dollar question is, why is so much better to breastfeed instead of using formula if formula is more convenient? Well, it appears to be more convenient, but if you think about formula, I'm, I'm, I'm getting sidetracked here. <laughs> Uh, uh, if you think about formula, you have to use sterile water or buy it. You have to wash bottles and sterilize them. You have to prepare the formula, dilute it with water and mix it and give it to the baby. Um, formula is a very high risk of contamination. We had a recent problem yes. with the formula makers where the formula was highly contaminated and we actually had some fatal uh, consequences. And uh, of course, after that, a shortage in product because they have to close the company. So uh, at that time is when you come to think, well, you know, if I would be breastfeeding, I wouldn't have to be worrying about getting formula. Um, breast milk, def definitely, it's better than formula because it's a human milk for the human babies designed specifically for the mother to her baby. It's individualized. Mm -hmm. So it's the best food the baby can get. It's 100% natural. It provides the baby nutrition plus health benefits plus growth benefits. Formula, it's only a food. Yes. And it's an artificial one. I think that kind of explains it all. Besides that, uh, formula with the recent children is uh, super expensive. Um, there's any estimates are, uh, about how much a mother save uh, on average? Yes, if a mother has to buy a standard formula, just the standard formula, the regular one, for a whole year is between $1,200 to $1,500. Wow. If the baby does not tolerate regular formula and has to take a specific brand, or type of formula for sensitive uh, or digestive problems, that mother can spend up to $4,000, not counting bottles, teats, sterilizers, uh, sterile water, time preparing the formula, and time washing all the bottles. Well, I'm a specialist. <laughs> yes. That's a lot of money. Uh, Ms. Gracie, we appreciate a lot that you coming to, to, to help us understand this topic better and to clarify our questions. Um, is there something else that you would like to mention? Well, um, I guess definitely uh, breastfeeding is the best and uh, we've been promoting breastfeeding for over 30 years now and I am very convinced that this is the best and I know there's a lot of fears and the mothers, will I produce enough milk, will I be able to breastfeed, a lot of moms decide to do breastfeeding and bottle feeding since the very beginning. Uh, my biggest recommendation would be please give it a chance to breastfeeding before you aim for the bottle. Uh, the benefits are superior. Your baby's brain growth and development is going to be superior. I never mentioned that the babies can get uh, up to higher IQs. Research proves it. So give it a, an opportunity and, and give yourself the opportunity to get this bonding and this special time with your baby, trying to breastfeed exclusively at least for the first few weeks. Great. Uh, once again, thank you so much, Ms. Gracie. Um, would you like to share any uh, resources with us? Uh, there are a lot of uh, resources that can help you with breastfeeding. At Valley Regional Medical Center, we provide breastfeeding consultations or counseling at no charge. You can call the number 956-350-7884 for an appointment or at a telephone consultation. Uh, you can also uh, visit, we have an agency here in town, the EFNA, Infant and Family Nutrition Agency, and La Leche League organization, La, La Leche League.org. It's LLI.org. It's a very good website that has a lot of uh, very trusted information, very well backed up information and research for the new moms that might want to have uh, some uh, more information. Excellent. Once again, thank you so much. We appreciate your time. Um, this episode of Baby Boons was uh, brought to us by the Brownsville uh, Breastfeeding Community Coalition. Just remember to follow us on Facebook and follow us in, in our next episode. Thank you so much, everyone, and have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you.